Okay, and here's the last podcast in our Islands Outside of the Caribbean series for Biol uh, 2462, Caribbean Island Ecology. And our last two sets of islands I want to talk about are the Galapagos and Hawaii. So both true oceanic islands of volcanic origin. They're oceanic. They have never um, been attached to a continent at all. So any species which uh, is found on those islands has some sort of dispersal origin. So the species must have been good dispersers and uh, they must have been able to make it across a large uh, expanse of ocean to get to the Galapagos. So the species uh, in the Galapagos, um, as opposed to Hawaii, uh, mainly come from South America. The ocean currents and the wind um, directions favor species coming from South America to the Galapagos. So the Galapagos, um, it's got a total land area of about 7,880 uh, eight square kilometers. So that's pretty small. Uh, the islands, uh, it's a set of islands, a set of different islands, as we'll see in a minute. They range in size from about about the size of Trinidad, 4,600 square kilometers, to less than one square kilometers. Uh, the reason for the range in sizes is mainly to do with uh, the fact that the Galapagos um, is a volcanic of volcanic origin, um, but uh, the older islands tend to get eroded away over time. Um, it's about a thousand kilometers from South America, the nearest continent, and the oldest islands are about five to ten million years old. Although the old islands now are completely submerged, uh, the oldest islands now are completely submerged, the ones which are above land still are about above ocean still are about five to ten million years old. So it's likely that there were older islands, older than five to ten million years, uh, which species could have colonized and then subsequently colonized the islands which exist today, the newer islands. So that age of five to ten million uh, years is um, uh, prefaced by the fact that they're probably were older islands there. So the plants and animals in the Galapagos probably are older than or dispersed to the islands uh, probably or could conceivably be older than five to ten million years. Um, plants dominate, um, plants which have reached the Galapagos tend to be dominated by islands. Uh, plants which reach the Galapagos tend to be dominated by species which have been dispersed by birds. So as we've said in previous lectures, these oceanic islands in the middle of the ocean, um, it's very difficult for uh, wind dispersed propagules and so on to actually find these islands. They could miss by 10 meters, but that would still be a miss. But um, seeds and so on um, of plants which have been dispersed by birds uh, are much more likely to find the island because the dispersal is active and it's directed. There are no mammals on the Galapagos. No mammals uh, made it to the Galapagos which reflects the very poor um, ability of mammals to disperse and there's only birds, reptiles and arthropods and the reptiles are represented by the charismatic uh, giant tortoises of the Galapagos and also uh, the marine iguanas. So they probably derive from species which were aquatic and were able to make it across the ocean from the continent over a thousand kilometers. Um, there are also arthropods, insects and so on, which have made it across um, insects can disperse quite well, both the flying and the non-flying ones. So there is the Galapagos. Now the Galapagos is um, dominated by this large island. Um, is it? 
uh, Isla Isabella and Isla uh, Ferdinina. Now this island is where the active volcanism is occurring today. Okay, so this is the largest island and it's the island which is um, actively increasing in size, particularly the Isla Ferdinina. Uh, the other islands here, the volcanoes, are extinct, uh, particularly the Isla uh, San Cristobal. So the Galapagos is actually on a, a plate which is moving uh, to from east to west. Okay? And if you can imagine, is it east to west or west to east? Yeah, it's actually moving from the west to the east. Okay? And uh, as it moves, it moves over a stationary spot in the Earth's mantle, where we're known as a hot spot, which is a hot spot of volcanism. Okay? So it's like the uh, plate is like a sheet of paper being passed across or over the top of a, a candle. Okay? So the burn in the paper will move as you move the paper across over the top of the candle. And in the same way, the crust, the oceanic crust here, is burning as you move it over the hot spot in the Earth's mantle. And above the hot spot, you, you'll get your volcanoes. And as the crust moves away, then these volcanoes will uh, go extinct and uh, the islands will become eroded away by the action of the oceans. Okay, so the Galapagos Island is an oceanic island above a hot spot. Uh, the islands uh, start out fairly large, but they gradually decrease in size as volcanism ceases and the ability of the island to increase in size decreases and the ocean takes over and erodes away. So the oldest islands, uh, San Cristobal is about, well, some of these um, smaller rocks further to the east, um, they are about five to ten million years old. But there probably were older islands as evidenced by um, undersea seamounts which um, represent um, islands which have been completely eroded away by the ocean. So there's been at least five to ten million years uh, of land in this area above water, probably longer, and that's the amount of time that uh, the Galapagos have had to accumulate species by dispersal. Okay. So the Galapagos are not short islands. They, are, they go up to about um, about a thousand meters or about 900 meters. So similar to Trinidad. Um, they are right on the equator but uh, they don't experience a lot of um, rainfall, particularly at sea level. It's only when you uh, go up um, in fact the prevailing winds tend to come from the west uh, it's only when you go up in altitude where orographic rainfall um, takes place that you will start to get um, more rainfall and therefore greater amounts of vegetation and therefore greater amounts of uh, plants and animals and in some of the older islands which have been effectively eroded away most of the time you get very little uh, by the way of these upper vegetated zones and so the island is mainly uh, arid uh, in the arid zone so the rainfall doesn't really uh, hit these islands. So down the bottom of the island you have this arid zone with um, cacti and low shrubs. This is a species of prickly pear or ratchet as you call it in uh, Trinidad. Uh, Apuntia is the scientific genus and this has arrived. It probably arrived as a, a piece of cactus rafting across the ocean and dispersing up onto the shores and then from there managing to uh, colonize the rest of the island. As you go further up you get um, the thicket vegetation 
and um, woodland vegetation and right at the top the very humid uh, cloud forests with large numbers of epiphytes and so on. Now the Galapagos has been isolated uh, since it was born. So since it appeared above the ocean it has never had any contact with continents until um, people arrived and started bringing plants and animals across to the island. So the native species of the Galapagos have had a long time to diversify. So practically every species or well, native species on the Galapagos is an endemic species. So there are many weird and wonderful both plants and animals. So just a few of the um, animals. The giant tortoises of the Galapagos are fairly famous. These um, tortoises are about a meter long and three quarters of a meter across. So they're huge animals. And because there aren't any ground predators or there weren't any ground predators uh, before humans arrived, uh, these tortoises were relatively undisturbed. So they just wandered around eating the vegetation and growing and getting bigger and bigger. Another charismatic animal in the Galapagos are the uh, marine iguanas. So these are similar to the iguanas that you get here in Trinidad but their life is mainly based in the ocean. So they'll dive into the ocean and they'll eat the algae which grows on the rocks in the ocean. So they are a semi-aquatic iguana. Um, iguanas are quite good swimmers so they probably colonize the island by swimming across the ocean. So fairly unique species in the Galapagos. It's been isolated for a long time and uh, it has therefore developed a large number of endemic species. So even though the Galapagos is relatively small in size, uh, it still has developed endemic species mainly because it is so severely isolated. When we look at the Lesser Antillean Islands which have been, uh, their origin is, is much shorter. I don't think they've been above water uh, for more than uh, two or three million years. But they've also much closer to um, our other islands and to the continent. So it's much more likely they would have been uh, colonized by other species. So their endemism is much lower. The Galapagos, much more isolated, um, has been uh, there has been land in the vicinity of the vicinity of the Galapagos for uh, up to 10 million years, probably longer. So they have greater numbers of endemic species. Right, Galapagos is famous um, amongst evolution circles uh, circles uh, because of Charles Darwin. Uh, Charles Darwin, the naturalist who uh, came up with the theory of uh, evolution by natural selection. Uh, visited the islands in 1835 during his famous uh, voyage around the world uh, with the Beagle, uh, the ship called the Beagle. And what he saw on the Galapagos helped him formulate um, to a great extent that theory of natural uh, selection and evolution through natural selection. Um, on the Galapagos you have uh, many, not only these charismatic animals, but also many other animals which uh, you can see stages in them specializing in different niches. And in particular, he saw the finches and he used the finches on Galapagos as a uh, model for uh, an example of how natural selection can form and act on species to uh, make them change through time. Okay, so he looked at um, the finches on different islands and he saw that they were different on the different islands and he saw how the difference uh, was reflected in the different resources which were available to those species. So if we look at the finches on the Galapagos, they have many different um, types of beaks. Okay, and the beaks of birds really represent what 
uh, those birds eat so what resources they exploit okay so he imagined that uh, the original uh, finch which arrived on uh, the Galapagos uh, had a fairly robust large beak um, finches like you get in in Trinidad um, they eat seeds mainly when they arrived on the Galapagos then maybe they got blown across the ocean um, by a storm and so on uh, they found that there were many different resources which weren't being exploited by any other birds so these finches began to specialize into using those other resources so for instance um, a, a group of the population of finches which grew up uh, began to feed on grubs now to better able them to get at those grubs their beaks became much more elongated and slenderer so that they could pick those grubs up out of um, the leaf litter and out of um, uh, decaying vegetation and so on um, some of them um, began to specialize in eating buds and fruit okay so their bills were specialized to be able to exploit that uh, one type of finch the tool using finch is a picture of it here he's holding a stick in his beak and he's sticking it into holes in this decaying wood to try and force insects out of those holes okay once the insect crawls out the finch will drop the stick and grab the grub and eat it so a tool using finch was uh, another niche which developed in the Galapagos and that has uh, got a lot of pr um, press as well so there were also leaf eating finches and insect eating finches and so on so from the single the first colonizer many different types of finches arose and Darwin saw this and it really influenced his thinking about how different species uh, arose around the world with time so the Galapagos holds a very important place in the development of theories uh, about evolution and natural selection uh, through Darwin today the Galapagos is uh, like most islands in a lot of conservation trouble uh, humans have arrived and they have brought in a lot of invasive species uh, species from the continent which are able to utilize resources which uh, these island species previously were able to use and they basically outcompete these island species so a lot of the island species are very much under threat in the Galapagos and we'll see that uh, a similar sort of situation does also exist in the Hawaiian Islands in the next podcast. So I'm going to leave uh, this podcast here and compile this one and come back with the Hawaiian Island uh, in the next podcast.